NMR spin relaxation is one of the very powerful techniques in NMR for studying conformational dynamics in proteins or chemical kinetic processes. So I'll tell you about two studies we've completed recently that illustrate how we apply NMR to biological problems. In the first study, Dr. Ying Li, a postdoc in the group, used NMR relaxation to study the mechanism of dimerization of E cadherin, a protein that's critical in forming adhesion between cells and multicellular organisms. Her work was able to demonstrate that a hypothesized X dimer was an important intermediate in the dimerization process, and that this dimer was important in setting the appropriate time scale for the biological function of the molecule. In a second project, Dr. Michelle Gill, another postdoc in the group, collaborated with John Hunt and his student, Bertie Ergel, to study the enzymatic mechanism of ALK-B, again using NMR spectroscopy, primarily spin relaxation, in conjunction with fluorescence experiments that Dr. Hunt's group performed. The combination showed that a set of conformational dynamic changes in the protein control the multi-step pathway that the enzyme has to take in order to carry out its biological function. Both of these projects illustrate I think, the power of NMR spectroscopy in then probing dynamic properties in proteins, which we believe underlie most of their functions. Instrumentation is critical. One major part of my research is devoted to developing new methods in NMR spin relaxation. This work requires and is driven by access to the latest technology, the latest generation of consoles, probes, and magnets. At the same time, applications to biological systems benefit from multiple static magnetic fields in NMR spectrometers ranging from 500 megahertz to one gigahertz and beyond. So we need access to both state-of-the-art electronics, state-of-the-art probes, and state-of-the-art magnets for everything that we do. So throughout the history of NMR spectroscopy, each step to a higher and higher magnetic field has opened up new opportunities, and I think this is going to continue at one, past one gigahertz and beyond. So I look forward to the development of those technologies.